this slide you are seeing are the work of Fred Stern, a video artist at UMBC. Fred also does something else. He makes rainbows right here in the Inner Harbor. Now, the day that we started to shoot this story recently, it was a little overcast, and we were afraid we wouldn't find a rainbow. Well, you can tell Fred was just a little bit down, a little bit worried about the fact that we might not get a rainbow as he told us how he got into the rainbow business. Rainbow sculptures first started about two years ago. Um, I had arrived in Baltimore and found myself quite impressed by the urban renewal work going on in the city. Um, the first time I presented one was for the Baltimore Arts Festival. The piece is entitled Baltimore Smiling Through Tears Looks Like a Rainbow and is, it is in fact a dedication to urban renewal in the city. Um, in terms of the technology of rainbows and how they work, the man-made rainbows that I use a fireboat for, and you can see one out back there, um, involve generating a mist so that the sun breaks through the mist and in fact creates a rainbow. See what I mean? Fred was really worried there would be no rainbow. Of course, I guess there are more serious things to be worried about these days. But on the other hand, what we're really searching for is beauty. And beauty is something that transcends just about everything. We're going to have to wait. What else can you do? You can't move the sun and the clouds. We'll let Fred tell us some more about it. One of the major projects I'm attempting right now is, instead of having a fireboat out in the harbor, is to put up a permanent pump station so that any day that the sun is out, there'll be a rainbow spanning the harbor. Um, the project would be computer controlled in terms of checking the sun's angle and also the wind velocities. Um, I've done a de complete design computation on it and the cost figure is somewhere around $49,000 to install, inst install the structure. Um, at this point in the game, what I'm really searching for is the, uh, the pot of gold that sits in front of the rainbow. But the sun wasn't bright enough for a rainbow. We were really down. This had stopped just being a story. By now, it was a quest. And then the fireboat radioed that they could see a rainbow from the boat. By this time, all of us were going crazy. We just had to have a rainbow. in America does it. Um, you wind up going out with a garden hose, and if the sun's at the right angle, a rainbow appears in the mist. I guess as you get to be a little bit older, you need a bigger, bigger garden hose. And then the sun broke through brilliantly. We raced to shore and sent the boat out again.
This is the UMBC Video Lab where Fred works. We now have the Evening Magazine cameraman on camera. All right, there he is floating through the harbor. We can kind of tint him up so we can disguise him and he doesn't have to get a union fee. You notice now what I'm really doing is poking a hole within his head so the other image is coming through that. And I can enlarge the size of the hole. And then we go swing back around to me. And now I can start flying over the harbor. What we're really saying is, is if, if the permanent structure does go up, we're talking to the fact that Baltimore is really leading the nation in terms of in terms of um, in terms of having some kind of physical symbol of what it, what in fact is happening here. Um, the cost of doing the rainbow would be about fifty thousand uh, dollars. In terms of projects on a municipal or national level, this is not a lot of money. I would hope that the funds for a permanent rainbow structure would not come from the taxpayers, but could be solicited from the business community. Okay, head back to quarters, Fireboat 2. 